In this video, we're going to talk about change of basis, which is the process by which we change from one basis to another. So let's say we have a vector space V, and then from this vector space, I'm going to pull out a set of vectors called E. So let's just say this set of vectors is called E, and this set contains n vectors. And these n vectors will form a basis for this vector space. So that means any other vector within this vector space can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors, and all these vectors are linearly independent. And so let's say we have another set of vectors called f. And this time this set is populated by another, uh, another string of n vectors. And then let's say this also forms a basis for the vector space v. So these are two different bases for, this, for the same vector space v. And so let's say we have a vector called alpha. And so because e form, uh, e is a basis for the vector space v, I know I can express alpha as a linear combination of the vectors within e. So I can express alpha in such a way. So this is a linear combination of the vectors within e. So the final term is a n e n. And then since we know that f also forms a basis for the vector space v, we can express the same vector with in a different way. So this time we can, we're also expressing alpha as a linear combination of other vectors, but this time we're using a different set of vectors for the linear combination. So both of these expressions, they result in the same vector alpha. But you can see that this uh, the right-hand side expression is different. Here you're using the vectors within the basis E, and you have these corresponding scalars, and then now you're changing to a different basis F, and then you have a different set of scalars to construct your linear combination. So now I'm going to define something called the coordinate vector. So I'm going to define, I'm going to denote a coordinate vector using this notation. Uh, you might have seen the concept of a coordinate vector in my previous videos. So in case you haven't watched it, I'm going to define it again. So coordinate vector it really is a column matrix. So if for a, a coordinate vector for the vector alpha with respect to the uh, basis E, this would uh, be equal to a column matrix, which is equal to A1, A2, all the way to An. So what this contains is that it contains all the scalars you have here, all the scalars that you use to construct your linear combination. And then of course I can define a similar coordinate vector, but this time for the vector space F, F, F not for the vector space, for the basis F. And then for this coordinate vector, it's going to be equal to B1, B2, all the way to Bn. So you, see, you can see that we can use this column matrix to represent a vector. So this would represent all the scalars you would need to, to use to construct, the, to construct the linear combination. And you can see that for different, for different uh, bases, your set of scalars will change. So if you're using the basis E, you have a set of scalars. If you change a basis to basis F, you have a different set of scalars. So now what I want to do is I want to connect these two uh, column matrices. I want to find a way by which I can connect these two column matrices. So let's say this column matrix is called A, this column matrix is called B. Later on we're going to find that we can actually relate B with A by using a matrix called S. So this would be the transition matrix. So this is what we're going to find. We're going to show that we can relate B and A with a matrix and we're going to define what this matrix S should be. And if you've watched a previous video about linear transformations, you will see that this whole process is actually very similar to the process of taking a linear transformation. So it would be helpful if you've watched that last video as well. So now uh, I'm going to define each and every single one of the vectors within E in terms of, uh, in terms of the vectors within F. So E1 is a vector within the vector space V, so that means I can express E1 as a linear combination of the vectors within F, and that is what I'm going to do. So E1, I'm going to express it as a linear combination of the vectors within F. So you can see that this is a linear combination, and these scalars will be defined, uh, will, be de will be dependent on uh, what your E and your F would be. And so, uh, so on and so forth, I can do the same thing for E1, E2, all the way to En. And so you can see we have a general formula. So for the jth vector within the basis E, you get something like this. So Sij multiplied by Fi. So this is how each and every single one of the vectors within E 
are going to be defined as a linear combination of the vectors within f. And so now let's say I have, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with my vector alpha. And then as we know, we can express this as a linear combination of the vectors within e. And then now I'm going to substitute in this expression. So ej is equal to this summation sign applied to sij fi. And now I'm going to switch the orders around a bit. I'm going to switch this summation sign over to the front. So from i equal to 1, i equal to n, so j equal to 1, j equal to n. So we get aj, sij, fi. And so now you can see I'm going to put a bracket over here. You can see now that I've, I've expressed alpha as a linear combination of the vectors within f. So you can see that each f1, f2, f3, it's multiplied by a scalar that is equal to the expression within the bracket. So let me just copy down this once. So we've expressed alpha as a linear combination. So i is equal to 1 to n, and then j is equal to 1 to n, a j, s i j, and then you have f i. So these would be the scalars you're going to attach to f i to construct your linear combination for alpha. And don't forget alpha uh, can be expressed as a linear combination of f using the scalars b. So we, this is also equal to i is equal to 1 to n, b i, f i. And so now you can see that we've basically achieved what we set out to do. At the start we wanted to, we had this uh, set of, uh, we had this matrix of scalars b1 to b n, and then we had this matrix of scalars a1 to a n, and I wanted to relate b1, uh, all the all the values within b with all the values within a. And you can see that we have essentially achieved this. You can see that you can just match up each and every single one of the of the terms uh, of the scalars. You can see that the term attached to f1 is b1, and then over here you can see the term attached to f1 is equal to the summation of j equal to 1 to n a j s 1 j. So all I'm doing is substituting i is equal to 1 into this expression. And so on and so forth, you can do the same thing for the rest of uh, the other scalars within b. So b, b2, b3, all the way to bn, you'll get something similar. So to conclude, you can see that b1, b2, all the way to bn, this is equal to these summations. So I'm just going to write this out again. So 1j, and then you get uh, similar expressions all the way down to n. So for the final nth element, this is going to be equal to a n, s, n, j. And uh, this expression can actually be expressed as a matrix s multiplied by a. So a, don't forget, is the coordinate vector over here. And incidentally, the left hand side is equal to b. So this coordinate vector is equal to b. And so you can see that we have essentially obtained our relationship. So b is equal to some matrix s times a. And then you can uh, analyze this uh, this term over here, and you can see that s is going to be equal to something like this. So s11, s12, s13, and so on, all the way to s1n. So the first term represents the row, the second term represents the number, uh, the, the column. So this is uh, row 1, column, column 1, this is row 1, column 2, this is the term in row 1, column 3, and so on. So this one would be row 2, column 1, row 2, column 2, and so on, all the way to S2n, row 2, column n. And so this just keeps on going. So this is Sn1, Sn2, all the way to Snn, so row n, column n. So this is what your S is going to be. And then you can see that B and A can be related to each other using this matrix S.